Hi guys, it's Rachel. Um, today is November 21st, 2020. It's currently 9 degrees outside and we're on our way to Simon Fraser University. SFU is a well-known and recognized university located in Metro Vancouver and it's nestled on top of a mountain located in Burnaby. So yeah, we're on our way there right now and we'll take you along and show you around. That's Burnaby Mountain. Hi guys, it's Rachel and in today's video, I'll be sharing a case study of an applicant that originally came to Canada on a study permit but eventually married for PR. Later on, I will discuss the errors he made that eventually got him deported from Canada. I wanted to share this case with you guys because I find that what he did is very common amongst international students. The marriage to PR pathway is often discussed as the easy way out. But after reading this case, I realized that the consequences for fake marriages are severe. And well, this story is a prime example of how this route can definitely ruin your chances of staying in Canada. Anyway, if you like this video or you find it useful, please do like and subscribe to my channel for more immigration case studies, news, and information. I'd really appreciate that, you guys. Thank you. So now let's dig deeper into the story and well, let's jump right into it. He completed his high school education in China, but his parents wanted him to get a foreign education in Canada, as the parents believe that this will further improve his job prospects and life in general. And doesn't this ring a bell? Eventually, he entered Canada on October 2003 on a study permit. His parents funded his education at the cost of 5,500 Canadian dollars per semester and also covered his living expenses as well. For accommodations, he lived with his aunt who resides here in Canada. The applicant attended Seneca College in Toronto to take English proficiency courses in order to enroll in an accounting program. In order to get in the accounting program, he had to pass the minimum requirement of a level 8 in his English proficiency courses. But unfortunately, he only scored a level 7 in English, which was not enough for him to enter the accounting program. After this failure, he lost motivation and decided not to attend classes as a full-time student. He transferred to another college to continue his English studies. However, he also did not attend classes and preferred to stay home. He was obliged to notify this to immigration officials, but he didn't. Bruh. And he knew his status was dependent on him being a full-time student, but I don't know why he still opted to drop out of his classes. Later on, his parents found out and they were quite disappointed on his failure but pressured him to find a way to stay in Canada and I mean I don't blame them because 5,500 Canadian dollars per sem is no joke anyway in a separate story uh, his aunt was in the process of buying a home when she met Christine and well I'm letting you guys know now that Christine is basically a shady agent in this story oh, so no. Christine reached out to the applicant and proposed the idea to help him remain in Canada via the fake marriage route uh-oh sketch the applicant was even hesitant to push through and even asked Christine if this was legal Christine said that it was all legal and she also said that a lot of people do this 
all the time to get their PR. So with that, the applicant agreed to Christine's offer. She found a woman named Michelle for him to marry. They paid Michelle 30,000 Canadian dollars for the fake marriage and 2,000 Canadian dollars to Christine as a referral fee. On September 2005, he and Michelle married. He was 19 years old at the time. Super sketch. Five months later, Michelle submitted the sponsorship application and on December 2006, the applicant was granted PR. Two years after, the applicant and Michelle divorced. Okay, so uh, yeah, a little brain break. Um, let me give you guys some time to absorb the information because the next part will be a lot. Let's just walk around for a bit, you know, just clear our mind. <laughs> coffee here. Mm. So good. What's that? Oh. I guess it's time to film. Anyway, back to the story. In May 2013, CBSA or Canada Border Services Agency began investigating him regarding his marriage. The case didn't really say how the investigation came about, but there could have been a red flag on his application or someone may have reported him to CBSA. When he found out that he was being investigated, the applicant hired a lawyer to help him write an explanation letter or write a statement confirming that his marriage was indeed genuine or real. In March 2014, he attended his first ever immigration hearing and, well, it was concluded that he, in fact, lied on his application. Because of this, a removal order was issued, or in short, he was ordered to leave Canada. Fatality. But he did not stop there as he tried to appeal his decision. There are certain situations where you can appeal a decision and, well, this was one of them. So with that, the applicant appealed the decision and tried to explain all the reasons as to why he should remain in Canada at his appeal hearing. At his appeal, he said the following. First, he admitted that he knew that the marriage was fake. He was young, naive, scared, and he felt pressured by his family to remain in Canada, which is why he took the marriage route to please them. He also stated that many people take this route to get their PR and well, he was just one of them. When asked why he admitted to the marriage being fake, the applicant replied that they already had the evidence ready against him, which is why he didn't want to pursue the lie any further. The government counsel also cross-examined his aunt on the issue. The counsel asked the aunt, if she was okay with her nephew applying for citizenship on the basis that he got his PR fraudulently. And well, the aunt did not comment or answer that question. But she did say that it was her fault and that her nephew does not deserve to be punished for this matter. She even tried defending him by stating that her nephew is a Canadian that abides by the law and rules. How ironic. At the end of the hearing, the appeal was dismissed, the removal order is still effective, and he has to leave Canada. Oh, and guys, no. the applicant took quite a beating from the tribunal member, aka judge. Basically, the judge said that he committed a serious lie and showed no remorse or guilt for his actions. The judge said that his lie was direct and deliberate. He knew that fake marriages existed prior to coming to Canada. He knew that fake marriages are a way to immigrate to Canada and took that opportunity to remain permanently in Canada. He shifted the blame to his parents and aunt. He extended his study permit with no intention of going to class. And he used that extension to buy more time to find ways to 
illegally stay in Canada. He did nothing for two years but remain at home and waited for his PR to arrive. He lied at the Ontario Supreme Court and continued the lie under oath by saying that his marriage was real to CBSA officers. He only admitted the truth when he realized that the CBSA officers had all the evidence already. Basically, the judge scolded him for not taking any responsibility for his own actions. So, what can we learn from his case? Know that your purpose to come to Canada is to study and not PR. I mean, don't get me wrong, it's good to have PR in mind, but don't get tunnel vision and forget about your studies. Just like that guy. Take your education seriously and make sure to abide by your immigration conditions. Number two, choose a program that you like that eventually leads to something good and follow through. Prior to coming to Canada, you should already have a plan on how your education will help you in your chosen career path. Don't just study because it's a stepping stone to PR. Third, if you feel pressured by your situation, do not take the easy way out and get yourself into trouble by making a desperate move. Talk to your parents about your motivations and set a realistic expectation prior to coming to Canada. If you're already in Canada and your studies are not going well, take some time off or talk to someone, like a counselor. Try to find out if you're allowed to take a leave of absence from your studies so that you can clear your mind or maybe consider a change in program. You can also talk to an immigration lawyer to see what other immigration options are available for you. Fourth, even if you obtain PR through fraudulent means, that status can easily be taken away from you, just like our guy. In short, just don't cheat the system. Fifth, we hear a lot about fake marriages and how it's seen as the easy way or the easy route to PR. But guys, if you get caught, all your time, money, and effort spent in Canada will be wasted. Lastly, getting deported is no joke as this will completely wreck your immigration history, making your chances of returning to Canada super low to nearly impossible. Long story short, no to fake marriages. And I know that I joke about this all the time on my TikTok videos, but guys, really, this is a big no-no. Anyway, that's it. That's all I have for today. I hope that you enjoyed this story and also picked up a thing or two from this case. If you do have questions or comments, write it down below and I'll try my best to get back to you on that. I really like reading your comments, guys. That's basically how I start my day. So if you can comment below, please do. Follow me on my socials as well. I have an Instagram and TikTok account. That's at rrdenzel. Anyway, thank you again for taking the time to watch this video. I hope that you're all safe and I'll see you in the next one. Cheers. Thank you.